Hey, it's Dr. Karen here. Welcome to another edition of the Spiritual Medicine Digest. And uh, this week's theme is uh, teaching about emotional and energetic empathy. So what do I mean by that? Well, the best way to share with you um, what I want to you know, share with you today is to talk about what happened to me on Sunday. Yay! <laughs> okay, um, so on Sunday, I woke up, I love Sundays, it's a nice day out, playing with the dog, you know, getting ready for um, you know, a beautiful Sunday doing Kung Fu and uh, I was thinking maybe I'll do a CrossFit workout, right? I was feeling great, you know, started to drink my broth, uh, but I do a bone broth every morning on an empty stomach and um, suddenly I started feeling nauseous and I thought, oh no, not again. <laughs> well, I didn't really say, oh no, not again, but I thought, oh, this is curious. So I went to the bathroom and I said to my husband, I'm feeling nauseous again and pull up a chair, you know, <laughs> so I'm in front of the toilet and retching and uh, he's like, you don't have morning sickness, do you? And I'm like, I don't think so. Because no. <laughs> I know some of you are like, you have morning sickness? I'm like, no, I don't. So he goes, well, that's uh, kind of interesting. I think it's my fault. And I said, how is this your fault? And he goes, well, just before you got nauseous and vomited, I had really nasty thoughts in my head. And I'm like, why? And he says, well, because I just watched a video of some, you know, uh, black people, a group of black people beating up a group of white people. And, uh, you know, the funny thing in our household is that uh, I've told him that I don't want to hear about Black Lives Matter or BLM or anything like that, like that whole you know, political, corporate, whatever movement. It's just not my thing. So to please keep that to himself. So of course he was keeping it to himself, but his emotions weren't keeping to themselves. <laughs> so, so what happened was he had these nasty, nasty thoughts and reaction to watching this video. And um, he didn't say anything, but I felt it. And here's the thing is, if you're a highly sensitive soul like I am, even if your boundaries are 100%, when it comes to your loved ones, the closest loved ones, the ones that live in your house that you are the closest to, it's still possible that you can feel their stuff even if you have healthy boundaries. Now, did I spend time specifically making sure my boundaries were 100% that day? No, not that morning. So yeah, it could have been one of the boundaries had expanded through the ascension process and it wasn't 100% anymore. That's possible. But what I did find out was that um, even though that morning I had grounded, and these are the things that I do every morning to help uh, balance and, and harness and hone my superpowers so they're not like too big. <laughs> so they're like manageable and I can tune in when I want to. And then when I don't need to, they can kind of get managed. So every morning I do a grounding. I check my clairs to make sure they're balanced. So clairs are clairsentience, especially for me, because that's my dominant uh, spiritual gift. Uh, clairvoyance, clairaudience, et cetera. There's a whole bunch of clairs, so I balance those. I balance my awareness to make sure that my awareness of the now and the whole is balanced. So I'm not, you know, seeing, feeling things that are not relevant, uh, that I don't need to see, feel, hear, et cetera. So I'm balancing my awareness. And then I turn down the volume on my SIRRs. And what is that? I turn down the volume on my sensitivity. So I check every morning, like how sensitive am I to the most you know, sensitive thing? Uh, sort of like how sensitive are my sensors? And if it's really high and it can go lower, then I dial it down. So if it's like an at an eight, you know, then I can dial it down, you know, to usually to a two or a one. Uh, usually I don't get it to a zero because getting it to a zero would mean I'm not who I am highly sensitive soul. So being able to get it down to one or two is pretty darn good, you know, for most of us that are highly sensitive. Intensity, you can dial a particular symptom down. And that's been really helpful because if you have, if you stub your toe, if you have a pain, if you have some other symptom, if you can dial down the intensity of that symptom, unless it's for your highest and greatest good for it not to be dialed down, then you can ask for that, you know? And then there's RR. So SIRR, sim, uh, sensitivity, intensity, reactivity, this is where your, your part of you, either your physical body, energetic body, just reacts to what's going on in your outside world. And that's really something we want to control. So the reactivity, we want to get it uh, from a 10-point scale down to a zero, 
okay, down to a zero. And then the last R is resistance. And here's the thing, as a, as a human, we often resist things that are uncomfortable. So if we can cancel out the resistive energies, erase them, then things can flow easier and things can just move, you know, kind of like through our lives without it necessarily getting stuck, especially stuck in our bodies. So I already had done that, you know, this, that Sunday morning, all these different things. So I was a little bit surprised that I was that sensitive to the negative thoughts or the negative energy that my husband was exuding, even though it wasn't directed at me. And so what I found out when I did my muscle testing was that my yeses and nos were correct, but my proxying muscle testing was backwards, meaning, not backwards, sorry, uh, I was proxying for someone else, meaning that my body and energy was being used to heal another automatically. We call that auto-proxying, auto-proxying. So automatic proxying is something that you don't not choose to do consciously, but it just happens. And usually, um, if you're in a position like me, we have high responsibility, spiritual responsibility. Sometimes that's for the highest and greatest good. And this, in this case, it was because I needed to learn this concept of energetic and emotional empathy and how to manage it. Uh, so I can share it with you. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, and so in this case, autoproxying was for the highest good, but of course I didn't want to continue autoproxying because it was very uncomfortable, you know, just that vomiting and that nausea kind of feeling. So I found out that I was actually autoproxying for the African Americans that he had seen in the video. Not just those six people, but all the other people that were involved in that kind of violence is like a group of people. And from at least what source tells me, they were being paid to do it um, as part of, you know, trying to rise up people's emotions. That's kind of what they do with media sometimes and manipulate us. And it's really sometimes very difficult to figure out what's real and what isn't and what's a manipulation and what isn't, unless you're really, 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 really conscious and good at that and being yourself, fully yourself. So I was proxying for them, healing them, <laughs> and I was them <laughs> in that moment, very uncomfortable. So um, I was able to send healing directly to them, clear whatever entities that were going on in that space, the extent that I was allowed. And then I stopped auto-proxying for them. I was back to Karen Can, started to feel better, stopped vomiting, actually I didn't vomit a lot, but you know, stopped that nausea, that vomiting, and uh, was able to figure out that my um, emotional empathy for my husband was very high. If you measured it at a 10 point scale, it was above a five, you know, and it didn't have to be that high. So I thought, oh, well, can I dial it down? The answer was yes. So I dialed it down to a two. <laughs> and then same thing with energetic empathy, not quite the same as emotional, but energetic empathy is um, very similar, but instead of emotional energy, it's, it's other um, discordant energetic uh, things that we can empathize with another person. So again, that was high and I dialed that down. So in addition to all the other things that I can do to manage my sensitivity, this was a kind of a new protocol to dial down my energetic and emotional empathy with my husband in that particular situation. And that definitely helped a heck of a lot. I did spend the rest of the day really like relaxing. I was in a parasympathetic healing mode. So that means I was kind of sleepy, tired, you know, the nausea was gone, thankfully, but I really didn't do anything that, I mean, I did, I was very busy, you know, all week. So I, I, I suppose it was a good thing that I was just not doing anything. Um, but I didn't get to, you know, play Kung Fu or do anything active because my body was like, oh, okay, we're just like relaxing for the rest of the day. And then I was good as new on Monday or actually later on Sunday evening. I was really, really, you know, back to my normal energizer bunny self. Uh, <laughs> and that's okay. So sometimes these things will happen to you, even as a highly sensitive soul who's working hard to harness that sensitivity as a superpower. But, you know, these are things that are adjustments and recalibrations and, and things we learn along the way. It's not a big deal. Don't feel bad about it and don't feel like, oh, I should be better or, uh, if I was really good, or in my case, if I'm a really good healer, I shouldn't have any symptoms at all. Or if you get criticized by another person or a healer or a teacher that says you should be something or you should be better, you know, you shouldn't have these symptoms, or of course you have these symptoms because you have negative energy or, you know, something like that. And that's not resonating with you. Okay. Just understand that um, for some people, it is not their role to or responsibility to have to heal more than what's outside themselves 
okay. It's just not their role. But then there are some of us, and that's why the angel wings are here. Some of us, okay, do have that responsibility. And I've met so many, you know, clients and students who are star seeds, earth angels, indigo souls, who have a bigger mission. And it's a tough mission, okay? Not easy um, to have to heal a whole country, okay? Or the planet, or the cosmos, or a galaxy, or I'll get, I can just keep going on, okay? And, and maybe, maybe you're listening to this and go, I don't believe you. And I'm like, fine, that's okay. <laughs> But for those of you that are like, oh, wow, maybe that is me. You know, maybe this will help you because um, when you have high spiritual responsibilities, sometimes you do go through things that normal people, you know, don't go through um, because you are there to create a new solution or you are there to hold a frequency. So can you imagine someone, and I've met many, um, who are you know, highly sensitive people who are holding that frequency of love despite being abused or sexually abused or something like that during their lifetime. These are amazing, amazing people. For them to get through to the other side, to fully forgive, to fully be in love, even though what they've gone through is horrific, is an incredible feat. And that positive morphic field affects the rest of humanity. And the more people that can do that and can resonate that frequency, wow. I mean, this world is becoming more and more harmonious. Yeah, it really, really is. Although it may not seem like it when you're looking at mainstream media. <laughs> okay, so just a review. Uh, if you do divine muscle testing, you can check in to see how high is your emotional empathy to a particular person, especially check those close to you and whether it's necessary to be that high. And if not, you can turn down that dial. Same thing with energetic empathy. And it's actually fairly, fairly easy right? So you can just imagine that dial turning down, set that intention. And a couple of announcements for this week on Monday's Light Warrior Radio Show. Um, I am going to be interviewing Sarah Rose, and um, she is a consciousness expert. She really helps a lot of women, uh, especially in the healing world, um, get through what we call imposter syndrome. And this happens all the time. I went through it myself, even through medical school, where I felt like an imposter, like some someday someone is going to figure out that I don't know shit, excuse the language, you know? And the thing is, I did know lots of stuff and I was brilliant, and but I, I just kept thinking, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not worthy, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. And I was miserable and sad and depressed, you know, all that time um, because I just thought I should be better. You know, and some of us are really, really hard on, on ourselves. But Sarah Rose really helps people, you know, have a purpose-driven life and be able to get over this imposter syndrome. So you feel like I can share more. I can share my magic more in the world. So definitely join us on Light Warrior Radio as I'm interviewing Sarah Rose on Monday, 12 noon Eastern. And we'll put the link near the video so you know where to click the link at 12 noon. You can even call in and get a little bit of coaching uh, from her as well, which would be super cool. Uh, second announcement is that uh, if you missed it on August 26th, um, Wednesday, um, I did a telesummit interview uh, from Party to Joy talking about the stem cell phototherapy patches. And wow, there were so many amazing questions that people asked on, on, on that show. Um, yeah, we went over like two hours, I think. <laughs> You know, it was so spirited, so amazing, great questions people asked, and what's really amazing is that, you know, what, what I'm going to share with you one of the questions um, that, I, that I answered because I wanted people to understand this. The question was, um, and I asked them to ask me this, so the question was, you know, Dr. Karen, you know, you're a high-level healer, you do this amazing energy healing work, like, why would you need phototherapy patches? Like, you know? Um, you have this, all this healing gift that you do. So I say, my answer to this is, you know what? I am not fully conscious 100% of the time, 24 seven. I mean, I am working towards that. Right now I'm about 8.2% <laughs> of, the, of the waking moment in that space. Um, I know the magic number source has told me it's nine to 10% of your waking time. Um, now, of course, I get a lot of magic even before that. So every time, every increment up to that nine or 10%, you get more synchronicities, more prosperity, more abundance, uh, more wonderful things happening for sure. Um, but I don't know any human that is fully conscious 24 seven. So isn't it great that we have um, tools 
you know, high vibrational tools that can help us, that it can help our body support us while we're doing what we're doing. And that's why I love the X39 and the Lifeway patches. And that's why I did a whole show on From Heartache to Joy on these. Um, so if you miss that um, show talking about the stem cell patches, how they work, um, then I'll also post that link near here as well. It is a limited time replay. So if you're watching this video and you don't see it, it could be because it's done, okay? Because it's over, but I will post that link. Um, so if you do catch it in time, uh, you'll get a uh, free replay there. And uh, yeah, so check it out. Super, uh, super, super exciting stuff for us to have these amazing tools to help support us. Last announcement is that, uh, Next week is going to be the week of the Evolutionary Healer Summit. And then September 10th is the official book launch for the Evolutionary Healer. And I've seen the book cover. It looks incredible. It looks so beautiful. I absolutely love it. Uh, I have a chapter in there called Alternate Self Syndrome, where I have a protocol uh, of, of how to deal with that. And if you're like, what the heck is that? Well, you're going to find out soon. Uh, so I would love your support on September 10th to buy the book on Amazon so we can get on the bestseller list and share more about energy healing and um, natural ways of being and wellness with uh, the rest of the world. All right, so until next time, bye for now. Thank you so much for joining me. Lots of love.